Robert Morris University's School of Nursing and Health Sciences is pleased to present an interprofessional standardized patient simulation video depicting a patient hospitalized with gastritis who is experiencing vital sign changes and an altered mental state. The following video has been developed to highlight interprofessional collaboration when treating patients with comorbid physical and mental health diagnoses. Critical thinking and reflection questions to consider when viewing the video include, if this was your patient, what would you have done differently? What physical examination techniques were implemented? Was any part of the physical exam omitted? What history should be obtained from a patient presenting with epigastric pain? What are some differential diagnoses for a patient presenting with epigastric pain? What are some diagnostic tests and labs that should be ordered for a patient presenting with epigastric pain? What are the signs and symptoms of acute alcohol withdrawal? When are symptoms of acute alcohol withdrawal most likely to appear? What assessment tools are commonly used to assess for alcohol withdrawal? What orders would be appropriate to manage this patient? What was your impression of the interprofessional collaboration between the physician and psychiatric mental health nurse practitioner? Hello, Mrs. Smith. Hi. I'm Dr. Ramponi. Hi. And Hi, Mrs. Smith. I'm Janine. I'm a mental health nurse practitioner. Hi, Janine. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. So we wanted to follow up with you to see how you were feeling today now okay. that you've been admitted to the hospital. Are you still having some nausea? Yeah, I am. I don't feel so good in my stomach. Okay. Any vomiting at all? Uh, no. Uh -uh. Abdominal pain? Mm, a little bit. Sort of in here, I think. Okay. And what about your stools recently? My stools? Your bowel movements. Oh. What color have they been? Uh, I, boy, I guess kind of dark. Okay. Have you noticed any of them being somewhat black or? Hmm. Maybe. Yeah, I guess. Okay. You seem like you're a little restless. Ah, I, I don't know. I guess maybe that too. I, I itchy a little bit. Your skin feels itchy it all over? Yeah, I don't know. It's just, I, I don't like it here so much. Mm -hmm. No rash or anything. Mm -mm. Just feeling, mm -mm. feeling quite mm -hmm. itchy. Okay. Well, let me just examine you real quickly, if I could. If you have to. Okay, I'll make it brief. Okay. Just look at my light, if you will, and follow the light with your eyes. Okay, and could you sit up for me just sure. so I can listen love to your... Love to, love to. Just listen to your heart. And how about if you take a couple deep breaths for me? Again. And two more. Good. All right, perfect. If you can hold your arms out for me. Seems like you're tremoring a little bit. Hmm. Yeah, I guess so. Hmm. Let me have you squeeze my fingers okay. as hard as you can. All right, thank you. And let's have you pull your toes up to your nose and push down with your toes. Very good. Perfect patient. So you seem very tremorous and restless. I don't know. George? You're, you're acting funny. <laughs> Says him. by funny? Well, kind of shaky and just weird compared been going on I don't know I guess since I've been in here I don't know I don't know I'm trying to be good I don't like being here it's a change when you come into the hospital I'm ready to go home George no you're not allowed to go home yet can I go home well, not right now. A couple of concerns that we have. We were looking at your blood work and we noticed that your blood count is a little bit down. And when you have dark bowel movements, a lot of times that is because you're having some bleeding internally. Mm -hmm. 
So we will need to try to support you with that, but we also need to try to give you some medication to try to uh, calm the situation down. When you say that she was acting funny, what could you elaborate at all, perchance, or? Just, uh, you know, nervous. Uh, you know, norm normally she'll, if you give her medication, because normally in the morning she'll, she'll have a, a, a drink to kind of calm her nerves and, and, and get her ready to, you know, go. and I know we can't have a drink in here, so maybe, uh, maybe some sort of medication would, would help. Are you usually this anxious when you're at home? No, no, it's being here, this is crazy. And as far as, were you ever treated for any anxiety problems or no, anything like never, that? Never, never, no, no, no. I'm, and as far as with your husband alluding to having a drink in the morning, help me to understand, are you nervous? I have a shot of whiskey in my coffee in the morning to calm my nerves and to let me think clearly. Big deal. Is that the only time that you drink through the day is the morning? Well, you know, I mean, if I go out with my friends or something like that, I'll have something to drink, but that's, you know, just out with my friends. It's not like I sit there with a bottle of something or other. Right. Is it every day? Oh, no, I go out. I've got a good group of girlfriends, right? And we go out maybe three or four times a week for lunch and, you know, we'll have a couple drinks, no big deal. Okay. Well, she, I, I'm, I'm worried because she seems to be drinking more and more, and, and especially when she goes out with her friends. Don't, first of all, George, darling, is so conservative so straight laced he thinks one little tiny drink is over the top so you know George you know seriously the only thing I'd like you to do right now is get rid of that bug on the corner of the bed please I'm asking you to do that please <laughs> Got it. Mrs. Smith, I have a couple questions I would like to ask okay. you and, and your husband please also sure. to, to join in and I want you to understand that in no way is there any judgment being passed on you. We want to accurately assess what we're seeing symptom-wise because we're concerned um, about some of the symptoms you're having because your blood pressure is up and you're very shaky and sweaty and your pulse is rapid. And I want to ask you a little bit about the patterns of how much you've been drinking. And again, it's to keep you more safe and comfortable um, okay. so the more sure. honest and accurate you can be with me, the better we can help you. Sure. Okay. Go ahead. So you said that it might be maybe three or four times a week that you drink with your friends or even in the morning? Yes. Okay. When was the last time you actually had any alcohol to drink? Um, oh, boy. I think the last time, what day, this is whatever day, and then yesterday I came into the hospital, and it was the day before, okay. the day before. So about I went out to lunch. Ago. Yeah, okay. exactly. Okay. And how much would you normally, on, on any given day, how much would you normally drink? Oh, geez. I know it can fluctuate, yeah. but give me like a ballpark amount. I don't know. Three, four. Three I don't know. Four. You know, it's at lunch. You're there a couple hours. And what, what type of alcohol do you usually drink? Um, I personally, my personal drink of choice is uh, Cape Cotter, mm -hmm. vodka and mm -hmm. cranberry juice. So mix, and mixed drinks. A little bit of lime. Okay. Mm-hmm. How long have you had this pattern about three to four times a week? Ah, oh, gee, George, what do you think? Oh, quite a while. Quite I mean, a while. Yeah. Okay. It's, You've got good friends. I wish you They're wouldn't so go out great. so much with your friends. Really. Oh, well, you need to find something more to do yourself. Any, any other type of drugs b besides alcohol? Oh, no. No, 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 Yes, our concerns are that you know, how tremulous you are and agitated. And you alluded a couple minutes ago about a bug being on the bed. That has been there. That uh, it's, uh, he never really gets it. It just he swats at it, but he doesn't kill it, it j and it keeps coming back. Have you ever had anything like that before, where you see bugs on the bed or anything with your skin feeling anything touching you or no? Okay, how about uh -uh. hearing anything talk? Do you think in your mind's like playing tricks on you? No, nothing. Uh -uh. Okay, so this is new. Well, I. Is this a bug first, on the bed? Yeah, it's a bug on the bed, yeah. Happened. Okay, okay. How's your mood been lately? Great. Okay, no sadness or low mood, 
Nothing yeah. like that. I'm good, huh, George? Mm -hmm. How about the anxiety at home? At home? Mm -hmm. Do you well, ever feel stressed out or anxious? I don't know if I feel like that. No, I think I'm good. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, as far as when you use alcohol, um, have you felt that, do you feel that you need to cut down in any way? Heck no. no. Are you kidding? My friends, we go out and we have a few drinks. I mean, everybody does it. It's, you know. How does it make you feel when your husband um, says his concerns to you about it? I just don't, I ignore him totally because he, like I said, he is so Mr. I'm perfect and, you know, so don't do this. And I just yes. tune him out. Sorry. Have you ever had any time where you felt bad or guilt over drinking, you know, how you've acted or behaved or anything like that? No, uh-uh, no, and no, no, okay. no. Okay. And how about, you mentioned when you first get up, sometimes you need to have a shot in the morning. How do you feel when you first wake up? I, I feel fine, I don't need okay. to have it. So you don't okay. feel sweaty or shaky or anything? Oh, I don't think so, it's just that's my mm -hmm. morning routine. Okay. It, this is annoying, no offense. Uh, I understand. I appreciate that. It's hard to tell a total stranger a lot of information like this. I don't think like there's this. that much to tell, but anyway, we just go ahead. Be sorry, 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 it's okay. sorry. It's really okay. Have you ever had any kind of seizure history in the past? No. Okay, so nothing no. neurologically. Mm -mm. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, our goal is to help you to feel better, to help the stomach pain I'd go love away, that. and for you I to would love help that. you to calm down. Yeah. I think um, it's the crab cakes I had the other day at lunch. Have they you didn't been having a lot of GI distress recently. Well, no, just I mean that that day I you know I we went out and uh, when I came home uh, my stomach was bothering me and I I real I think it was the crab cakes I don't think they were up to par and I'm pretty sure that's why my stomach was hurting. This began a few days ago with this, the mm -hmm. stomach mm -hmm. distress. At lunch that one okay. day, yeah. Mm -hmm. Prior to that, you hadn't experienced not anything. Not really, no. I mean, I had gastritis, mm -hmm. I guess they call it, but I mean. I don't think anything, okay. nothing major. Okay. But your mood's been good. You haven't felt depressed. Um, any mm -hmm. ever thoughts ever cross your mind to want to take your life or end oh, your life? Oh God, no, nothing no, like no, 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 okay. no. Uh uh. Okay. Well, we're definitely going yeah. to get you something for the nausea. Yes. Oh, that, I'd love that. It That'd sounds be great. like, and we can give that right through your intravenous, mm -hmm. so that that'll hopefully take away your nausea. And then we also want to give you something to try to calm things down. Okay. Um, we'll keep monitoring your vital signs, your blood okay. pressure, your pulse rate. Okay. And if you continue to see anything like bugs or anything, please, we want to oh, know. Oh, someone will we know because know. I think yes. they need to I do something it's about really it. Frightening when that's happening. It's creepy. Yeah. We'll definitely continue to carefully monitor your symptoms okay. and to keep you comfortable. Okay. Um, we would prefer that you keep your side rails up. Don't try to get out of bed on your own or anything. Oh, well, Call for the I nurse. am so ready to go home, seriously. I if I had my pocketbook and my car keys, I'm out of here. I understand. All right, well, we're okay. going to go. We're going to go talk. We're okay. going to go talk and come up with a plan, and then we'll be back to talk to both of okay. you about it. Thank okay, you. thank you. All right, both. thank you. You did a really Sorry good job. I'm... No you problem. You did a very good no job. No problem. Thank you. We'll be back shortly. Hello, Mrs. Smith again. Hi. Long time no see. <laughs> I know. We were just out in the hall talking oh, okay. about trying to get a good plan to address the issues. I'll take my hand back. I think one of the things is a lot of the symptoms that you're having, being very restless mm -hmm. and feeling itchy oh, and, yeah. and also seeing things that, that are in your vision that aren't always there, that's pretty classic with withdrawal from alcohol. Get it. I know. No. I know. And it, no, no, no. And really? It, 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 it usually occurs within about two days. So we really appreciate you being honest with us about your drinking and because we want to be here to help you. So what we'd like to do is be able to give you some medication in the intravenous to try to uh, calm things down, calm you down, make you feel a little bit more comfortable because right now you're just so restless. We're going to start out with that medication like every hour and if that's not enough we can even do it more frequently than that but we really want you to be able to 
feel a lot calmer. Okay. Oh, wow. Purpose to make you more comfortable and just to let everything calm down? You know, right now we just want to take it one day at a time. Okay. And by taking it one day at a time, we'll give you that medication. The nurse will give you that medication. And as we get through these next few days, then you'll start to feel more comfortable, and then we can try to address this on a more permanent basis, if you will. We can try to work with your husband, work with you, but right now we just need to get through this immediate time. So I can't go home today? Well, not right now, not today. <sighs> George. But, but we're gonna try and get you to feel more comfortable and address the issue. You will feel better in a few days. You definitely will. We're gonna watch you very closely and keep you comfortable, and we'll help you every step of the way through this. Wow, I was really wanting to go home. I know, it's a lot to take in. <sighs> but we have a lot of support systems for you here, both for <laughs> you and your husband, and we're gonna get through this all together. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. So if you can just trust us that the medication will help you feel better, we're gonna get that okay. started immediately. We're gonna go right out and talk with the nursing staff and hopefully very shortly you'll start to feel more calm and, and okay. not see a lot of those things that are, you're seeing right now. Okay. All okay. right. Sure. Any Ooh. questions at all for right now? Any other thoughts from your perspective? Just to know that you totally have our support and we're going to help so you much. and we're going to take one day at a time. Oh, thanks. Whoopsie. Okay. That's okay. A little bit more. Mm -hmm. You did a good job today talking to us and how open and honest you were. Sorry. No, you were very honest, you were very open, and that honesty really helps us so that we can give you the best help that you need. Okay. And we'll be back to check on you a little bit later okay. to see how you're doing. Okay. okay. You're staying here, right? I'm staying. Right. Okay. All right. We'll be back in a, in a while to make sure everything's going well. Okay. All right. Thank you so much. Sure. <laughs> I think from a medical perspective, I really have a number of concerns. Uh, first of all, during my physical exam, she was very tremorous, and she's obviously hypertensive, she's tachycardic, I mean, she's showing a lot of signs that are concerning. Um, I would think one of the first things we want to do medically is actually start her with an IV of saline. Okay add some thiamine to mm -hmm. that, add some folic acid, and also she was very nauseated in the room, so I think giving her an antiemetic would be helpful. Um, what about from your perspective? I totally agree. She's in acute alcohol withdrawal and she's exhibiting delirium tremens or DTs as, as you see. And we need to get her blood pressure under control and stabilized as well as her pulse because she is very tachycardic. Mm -hmm. She was very diaphoretic also. And you could see the coarse tremors, mm -hmm. you know, when you were doing the neurological exam on her. So I agree. Um, we'll give her something to prevent any type of seizure, um, put in seizure precautions as well and then we'll go from there. Um, we can start with lorazepam 0.5, okay. and we will give her th in the IV, and we can give it as needed with the, the vital signs, and depending on if they start to stabilize or not, and we can, we can go from there with how she progresses. How often do you think we should give the lorazepam? Probably at least every hour. Every hour yeah. to start yeah. and off with. we can with increase it. We're starting very low because she's elderly, and we don't want to give her too much too quickly, but we can we can gauge it according to her symptoms. And then once we get her under control, we're really going to have to have a discharge plan for her also. We will. We will. We'll include her husband because you can see she's struggling with talking about that she has an alcohol problem, and there's a lot of denial and minimization. Um, they were getting at each other and starting to argue as well when he was confronting her. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I think we'll bring in social work, and we can develop an outpatient referral that will be more comfortable and suited for you know her, her situation. I think that sounds like a good plan. Mm -hmm. Let's go ahead and okay. talk with them about that then. Okay.